as a kablan or uh, uh, sa interview na to. So perhaps briefly provide us some information. So what is the EFOI policy of the national government? And why is this important to the Duterte administration given the mandate na binigay sa kanila ng mga taong bayan ng last election? The EFOI policy is to disclose uh, pertinent government information requested by the citizens to the citizens mm -hmm. when they request for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the original uh, policy is to do it uh, via paper-based, mm -hmm. meaning to say a citizen can go to that ed, uh, fill up a form, mm -hmm. and then ask for a particular uh, piece of information, and that ed is required to respond to that it, uh, request within 15 working days. Mm -hmm. Above that paper-based uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, policy. We have adopted an electronic uh, policy wherein uh, a person, if for example he lives in Mindanao or Visayas, need not go to Manila to ask for that information from DepEd, but now can actually ask that same information online on foi.gov.ph so that there's more uh, coverage mm -hmm. pagdating po sa access to information. Mm -hmm. Why do you think is the EFOI policy very important in terms of citizen participation? It's more. It's important because it increases the coverage. Mm -hmm. uh, we understand that since the Philippines is an archipelago, mm -hmm. and thus, uh, you know, a citizen would spend money to travel to Manila because most government offices in are, are in Manila. Mm -hmm. Having an electronic FOI facility uh, greatly increases the coverage of access to information because they don't need to travel anymore. They can access it online mm -hmm. and. Uh, more importantly, that question is already answered online and can be shared to everyone. So, mm -hmm. you, uh, for example, if you request for a paper-based uh, uh, information, uh, that information, when disclosed to you, is only beneficial to you and you alone. But online, if I request it to you, and, and uh, I, I request it from the government agency and the agency responds, that whole conversation, okay. that information disclosed, is beneficial to everyone who might be asking for the same thing. So what's the general feedback of the citizens and also within government with regard to the implementation of this EFOI policy? It's uh, positive. I mean, we started only with 15 agencies uh, in November 2016. And now it's already August. We're up from 15 to 130 uh, agencies. And we are continuously increasing onboarding. And we are... Uh, we are on schedule to get all 220 national government agencies on board EFOI by our first year anniversary. So it's okay. it's actually good. And citizens part, uh, we check, uh, we have success stories uh, on EFOI. Mm -hmm. People are getting uh, uh, you know good results out of uh, FOI. Of course, there are some requests that are denied because mm -hmm. they fall under exceptions. But the general observation is people are happy about the electronic facility. In regard to the challenges, what problems do you encounter so far in terms of the implementation? Uh, of course, you have to have uh, FOI champions within the agency. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, you have uh, bureaucratic challenges. Uh -huh. uh, you know, It's very easy for us to convince the smaller offices to mm -hmm. go on board because it's very simple. Mm -hmm. Meaning to say, for example, uh, a small attached agency with an executive director, it's very easy for them to identify who the FOI receiving officer okay. is who the FOI decision maker is, and uh, how to respond to an EFOI request. But for agencies as large as DepEd, bureaucratically, there are so many layers, there are so many levels. Uh, sometimes the challenge is how do they get uh, it approved? Will, will it go through several offices first before it's disclosed? Or can the principal, for example, disclose information at, her, at his or her level already? So those are the challenges. Mm -hmm. How do you think these challenges can be addressed? You're moving forward, what do you think are the institutional requirements to make this FOI really something that's mainstream and very institutionalized and sustainable for the future? Well, uh, first and foremost, we need uh, the law passed. No? Uh, although the executive order mm -hmm. has, you know, uh, can, can greatly uh, uh, influence uh, government workers to embrace uh, freedom of information, mm -hmm. iba pa rin pag uh, meron kang batas na nagkasabi na, you know, this is the government national policy on, <coughs> on, um, on na national government policy on uh, access to information. Also, we need to further improve 
and increase our capacity uh -huh. building. Okay. No, uh, it's not that uh, government workers are reluctant to disclose. They just don't know what the parameters uh -huh. are, okay. how, how, do we, how will they proceed with it. And so uh, we feel that we will continue to do uh, capacity building training, not only to the public sector, but also in the private sector. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.